All right, so today we're going to talk about the West between wars, uh, that being between World War I and World War II. After the breakup of World War I, Europe uh, was shaped very differently. Uh, there became kind of this uneasy peace between countries, uncertain securities between their borders. By the end of World War I, or known as the Great War at that time, the Treaty of Versailles had created very strict boundaries for the countries. Uh, this was done intentionally uh, to basically prevent future uh, tensions uh, over border disputes. Eventually, however, border disputes um, would not end, and European nations uh, would be led into future conflict. After the breakup, or even before the end of World War I, the then U.S. President Woodrow Wilson uh, had this grand vision for a League of Nations, a council of countries that would help come together and solve problems diplomatically before world stage wars would take, would take effect. Um, however, the failure of the U.S. government to even back Woodrow Wilson and become a part of the League of Nations uh, created a large weakness for that institution. The, Euro the European nations involved in the League of Nations um, continually between World War I and World War II refused to use force, uh, especially against upcoming leaders, fascist leaders like Adolf Hitler, for example. Um, and this uh, would lead into the conflict of the then coming Second World War. After World War I, the French demanded that Germany pay for what it saw as starting the war. Um, there was a large cost of reparations for this war. In 1921, Germany owed 132 billion marks in reparations, or war payments, for damages, loss of life, um, all those types of things. They were, uh, Germany was able to make their first payment of 2.5 billion marks, but by the next year, economically, they were unable uh, to pay those payments anymore. France, being outraged at this lack of payment, uh, came in with its military, took over the rural valley in Germany, which was its ma uh, main industrial center, um, and actually started to create things, um, manufacture goods out of German factories for their own profit. This obviously uh, started to cripple the German workforce as they were unable to pay their, their um, factory workers. Uh, in response, this created a concept uh, that we call runaway inflation in Germany after World War II and after France had taken over these industrial centers. Um, Germany began to pay their industrial workers simply by just printing more money. As a result, rapid inflation took place. The German mark soon became worthless. I kind of have a scale here that shows you from the beginning of World War I until 1923 just how worthless the German mark became. In 1914, towards the beginning of World War I, it took 4.2 German marks to equal $1. Uh, just nine years later, in 1923, it took 130 billion German marks to equal just one U.S. dollar. And uh, to kind of capitalize on the runaway inflation, by November 1923, it took 4.2 trillion marks just to equal one U.S. dollar. You can see in the picture here to the left that this is a German woman actually burning German marks to heat their home because uh, the money was just that worthless. In response to this runaway inflation, in 1924 there was a call internationally to rescue Germany from its inflation disaster. Uh, the Dawes plan would, uh, would essentially be uh, chosen to kind of counteract this runaway inflation. The new Dawes plan for reparations uh, payments um, basically reduced Germany's reparations and coordinated its annual payments with uh, something that Germany actually had the ability to pay. This way there were still some reparations being paid, but the German economy wasn't going to collapse. The Treaty of Locarno is very uh, interesting when it comes down to this concept. Um, so right now I want you to pause from this video, turn to page 753 in your textbooks, you're going to read the subject, uh, read the text underneath the subject heading the Treaty of Locarno, and I want you to list three positive aspects that the treaty had and also two negative aspects that the treaty had. Unfortunately for Germany and the Dawes plan, uh, the world was hit by the Great Depression. Uh, to make matters worse, 
Um, this depression, even though it started in the United States, actually crippled many European countries worse than it did the United States. In response, many European governments began taking more control of their economies. Uh, other countries' working classes began to renew interest in Marxist or communist ideals and politics, politics that offered quick answers, um, quick response by political leaders, and many people actually found themselves willing to give up a lot of their freedoms in order for quick dictatorial control that offered a quick response to the economic problems. Uh, at this stage in the world, democracy was on the defense. There were many fears, especially in the United States, that communism would kind of take over most of Europe and kind of look at like the impending enemy on the United States. All right, so uh, by tomorrow, I need you to complete the following assignment that you see here on the slideshow. Um, and that way, when you come to class, if you have any questions over this assignment, you'll be given time and uh, I can assist you one-on-one. -on -one.